have the uh, ultra lead module here and I have it set up for a sort of a medium crunch setting right now with the high gain switches set to normal not high gain and the ship switch is down which is the uh, more uh, relaxed mid profile um, and the tone controls are set treble up uh, 2 o'clock 2.30 middle about 11 o'clock bass about 1 o'clock 1.30 and presence up pretty high I like it it's it, the sizzle of the presence control adds a little sustain and sizzle so I like to have it up pretty high it's kind of inactive way down here anyway you don't really start hearing it until around 1 or 2 o'clock so I like to have that up especially at lower playing volumes I have the EQ set up with a little bit of a mild scoop and a, and a bump at 5k I'll explain that in a minute and the volume controls uh, master volume set around noon and and then the overall master on this into unit set at two o'clock now there's a reason I keep these down a little lower and I'll get to that so for right now um, the high gain mode adds a gain stage, a complete trial gain to gain stage. So this is the high gain off. This is with that additional stage on. And then uh, shift on. It adds more bark. What it actually does is it shifts all the tone controls, uh, bass, treble, and middle uh, down the register a little bit so they all operate in a slightly lower register, more farther down into the low, the, the low mids and mid range. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, same goes for the uh, red channel. <laughs> Shift. Now, um, the red channel has a more mid range forward profile anyway over the green channel. It's the low end is rolled off a little bit. The mid range and the sizzle are a little bit more forward for soloing and sustain. Um, now, the EQ, uh, the Regardless of the the layout of the knobs, the EQ is basically after everything. So the EQ is post master volumes or channel volumes on the modules. So these determine how much signal is sent to the EQ. The reason this is important, you see there's a little LED right here. Um... So when that LED is blinking, you're clipping the EQ circuit. When it just starts clipping, you don't really hear it. It adds a tiny bit of compression, but it doesn't sound fizzy or distorted. It, when, it, when the light is on all the time, it will sound distorted and funky. So what you want to do is you want to keep the channel volumes down a little bit, and if you want more volume, you turn the volume up on the master volume of the SIN1 or the SIN2. Um, so whenever you see those lights blinking, uh, you know that you want to bring down the volume level a little bit. An important thing about the EQ to know is that it says plus and minus 12. This is actually 12 dB boost and cut. So when you bump up the faders on a particular frequency, it really jacks up the level. <laughs> So they're really active. So if you bump them up a bunch, you're going to actually increase the gain of volume level a lot. So if you're trying to shape the tone because of how active the EQ is, what you want to do is bring the other frequencies down a little bit so that you can bump up the frequencies that you want and make it more apparent without bumping up the volume unless you want a volume boost and then go ahead and, and bump them up 
But I just wanted a subtle little sizzle on top of everything without necessarily a gain boost. So the volume doesn't really change much just the frequent the level at the frequency that you're of concern uh and that will also help keep you from overloading the the led the the eq circuit because if you jack all these up and you've got these sort of cranked then the, the eq will start to overload <laughs> So you'll see that it's, it's actually kind of hard to overload, but it's good to know that these are really key in where the overload starts. And because um, the signal is always going to the EQ, whether or not it's active, the signal is still always going to the input of the EQ circuit. So you will know in advance, you will know in advance if you're overloading the EQ, even though it's not active yet by turning the switch either to the on position or the red position. Now the on position means that the EQ is on all in the in position it means the EQ is on all the time for both channels. In the red position means it's only on on the red channel. So that's useful if you want to assign the EQ for your solo sound or whether you want to use the EQ to just shape the whole overall voicing of the module. Uh, so in the red only mode, say you're using it for a solo and you want to jack the mids or you want to jack the top or you want to bump up the bottom for a, a heavier, heavier rhythm sound. So you can, you can set that up and then assign it just to the red channel only. All right. Um, like I said, the uh, level controls affect how much signal goes to the EQ. So you want to be careful not to overload the EQ. Again, if the light is just blinking, just coming on as you're really attacking guitar, that's okay. You probably won't hear it. It's only when the LED is really on all the time that you have to worry about that. So let's see if I covered everything. The high gain switch the shift mode uh the presence let me show you the presence a little bit and i'm gonna i'm gonna accentuate the presence using the eq so you can hear what it's doing a little more easily and i'm strumming really lightly so it's a subtle presence control just like you, you normally have on a on a full-blown amplifier um, now I'm going to turn down the top end of the EQ and bump up the mids a little bit. To give you a little more bark. Now this is similar to what the shift is doing. You can also add level to it and you can shape what that mid boost sounds like. So that's a useful feature. Now, a lot of people are going to be familiar with EQs with regard to Mesa amps. The Mesa, the five band graphic, has a really specific purpose. Uh, on Mesa, gain stages are really mid range saturated, really mid heavy. So people tend to make a V shape out of the EQ. Uh, and Consequently, because other products like Riot that have EQs uh, are used in similar ways, people tend to do the same thing, really carve out the mids and jack up the top and the bottom. That's not really necessary on the Friat designs because the gain stages aren't as mid-heavy as the Mesa gain stages. So they're already a little bit scooped out. So by scooping them out like this, it, it gets really exaggerated to the point of really being silly. 
I'm practically useless. It'd be fun to goof around with, but it isn't really a practical sound. What I recommend is using uh, the EQ with a little bit more precision, a little bit more uh, isolated sort of approach to a particular frequency. And the frequencies of the EQ are designed to be sensitive to areas of the guitar where they resonate most, like the neck, the body woods, and the, the sound of the pickups, as opposed to just being a random frequencies. They're really selected to pick up the different harmonics of guitar resonances. So you're gonna find with a Strat, you're gonna set the EQ completely differently. Then you're going to set it with like a Les Paul. So um, pay attention to the frequencies of the EQ and how they can be used to really sculpt your tone rather than just going for the lame rain V shape. And you'll find that you can get a lot of color and variation out of the EQ uh, with real clean uh, sort of attack and operation and no noise uh, and no clipping. That about covers it.